The shown functions of the Infento 2.0 ePulse are based on the firmware that was released with the first kits by December 2024. There is a fair chance that later firmware will affect some of the shown functions. First thing to do is to build a ride. Connect the motor to the docking station and the handlebar elements also to the docking station. The connectors interfaces are unique. There is nothing that could potentially be done wrong. When using your kit for the very first time, the docking station might be busily flashing after inserting the battery for some 40 seconds. Give it the time to finish that. The docking station contains the Infento's proprietary motor controller. The metal part with the fins may become slightly warm while driving because it acts as heatsink for the integrated MOSFETs. The basic functions. For driving, just push the button on the docking station. It will show a white light. The motor will refuse to work unless you pull the brake lever within 20 seconds. If you do so, the light will turn green and you are ready to go. The small red button on the throttle grip enables driving backwards, but the speed is a bit reduced. Don't be irritated by the fact that I mounted the throttle grip upside down in this demo video. On the other side of the docking station, there is a key switch for the three different speed limits, 6, 11 and 16 km per hour. The third stage for 16 km is disabled when you get your kit from the factory, for safety reasons. Whenever you change the speed limit by the key switch, the motor will switch itself off and you will have to turn it on again as described before. These little keys seem to be interchangeable between various docking stations, at least they were on the two ones I had at hand. When you remove the battery from the docking station and reinsert it, for example after charging, you will notice that the light plays a two second sequence of white, red, green, blue. This seems to be a normal booting procedure of the controller. Hidden functions. Now there are three hidden functions you should know about. To use any of these, make sure that your motor is switched off. More speed for the 10 inch wheel. Push the button rapidly three times and lift up the driven wheel within three seconds. After a hectic purple blink sequence, the wheel will start turning for a moment. By doing this, the controller can guess if you have mounted the large 14 inch wheel or the small 10 inch wheel. With a small 10 inch wheel, the controller will allow for more RPM, aiming to achieve the same absolute driving speed as with a large wheel. Whenever you remove the battery from the docking station, this feature will be reset to achieve the correct speed with a large 14 inch wheel. Altering the turning direction. Push the button rapidly five times, which will be confirmed by a short purple blink. This will revert the driving direction of the motor. If your ride runs faster backwards than forward, it is very likely that you will have to use this feature. The selected option will be stored in the controller's EEPROM, even if the battery is being removed. Unlocking third speed level. After making sure the key switch is in position 1, push the button rapidly 10 times. 
then immediately turn the key to position 3. Now the motor should run faster in position 3 than in position 2. Do this only if you feel confident that your kit has the required skills and wears appropriate safety gear. The selected option will also be stored permanently in the EEPROM. To lock the third speed level again, just repeat the procedure from above. Dual motor feature. Last thing I wanted to cover is the dual motor option. The way it is meant to work means you can use two motors on one ride, being operated by a single throttle grip. Each motor has its own controller and its own battery, but the two controllers are being linked by a provided USB-C cable. The docking station with the throttle grip is the master and it determines the key switch speed setting. Altering the turning direction of each motor individually is still possible. Unfortunately, for some reason, I did not get this feature to work. The docking stations were somehow linked, but the slave motor just refused to spin. However, I feel like only 2% of Infanto owners will ever use this feature and if I should find out how to enable it, I will make a separate video about it. Thank you for watching. Happy building!